Hi, Christina. Welcome to the Vojo Health Podcast. Uh, so let me introduce myself. I'm Ellie, founder of Vojo Health, uh, where we create personalised plant-based diet plans for people to lose weight and get fit in the most sustainable way. And you are from Precision for Health, which is another nutrigenomics company more focused on fitness. Um, so give me a quick introduction to yourself and how you got into this area and more about Precision for Health. I'm Christina. I'm postdoctoral researcher at India Food, that is located in Madrid, in Spain. And also I'm part of Precision for Health, that is a knowledge-based company that is established uh, by the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. And in the AFUS, to we have the aim to bring to society the benefits of scientific discoveries in nutrition, lifestyle and health. And, and we perform genetic tests uh, with this aim and focusing uh, in different health aspects such as sports, uh, well-being, uh, weight and different health issues. Great. And how did you get into this this area of research yourself? Well, uh, I'm PhD and also I'm nutritionist, so I have been always very interested in how nutrition affects our health, but in a uh, molecular way. I mean, uh, more focusing how nutrients can affect us uh, and how can modify our um, I don't know, our predisposition to suffer uh, some uh, disease and how genetics can have a very great influence in all this process. Yeah, I totally understand your interest. It's, uh, it's an amazing field of, of science and research. Um, so, go starting to dive into our topic of how our sport performance can be related to our genetics. Uh, you're part of a research group that recently published a paper on um, uh, the genes, the ge genetic variations associated with endurance performance. And you included quite a few genes in that study, actually, which was, it was very interesting. And you actually designed an algorithm to help scientists predict sport performance of individuals. So which are some of the genes you included in that study? Yeah, so we published this study uh, last year in Frontiers in Genetics. So uh, our aim was like to design a genetic prediction score of endurance performance and analyze uh, this association with anthropometric and uh, sport efficiency uh, variables. And uh, uh, first that we did is that we evaluate the uh, scientific uh, literature to realize that the most of the studies was associated uh, uh, associate uh, genetic studies with physical capacities, but only focused like in individual genes. Um, for this reason, we consider that it was necessary to create like a more complex uh, prediction algorithm, including uh, different genetic factors. So we carry out an, an exhaustive literature review of different scientific databases, and we identify uh, all the studies that analyze the relationship between one or more genetic polymorphisms and sport performance, and we focus on those with more evidence. And finally, we choose uh, 11 genes uh, to be part of this algorithm of endurance performance, and nine of them were associated with uh, endurance capacities and two of them were like mainly related with with power abilities okay so you looked at endurance capacity like being able to go for longer but also power capabilities the ability to have to um do kind of power sports like sprinting and stuff okay cool what were the you weighted them differently as well so some of them you gave much more weighting than others in the algorithm and i guess that was to do with how much evidence there was for each each gene is that correct yeah yeah what uh during this uh, review of the literature we associate uh, to the all these genes that we selected the 11 genes we associate a different weight for each genes 
depending on the evidence, uh, on the current evidence in this uh, at this moment. So some genes have a very have great evidence, scientific evidence, and are uh, highly associated with some sports uh, outcome. And so in this way, we, we design our algorithm based on this way that we, as, uh, that we give to every gene. So how much can you actually predict someone's sport performance from their genes? Because there's a lot of uh, environmental factors as well, you know, like how, how well you're eating, how much you're training. So how much of it is genetic? As you know, uh, sport performance can be influenced by several different factors. This can include uh, intrinsic factors such as uh, the quality of training, the dietary habits, the technology use or even the, the weather conditions. There are many factors that can influence the sport performance. But besides this, there are some interesting factors such as uh, individual genetics profile that also plays a really important role in sport performance. So, uh, this study of genetic influence on sport performance is now a, a, a leading file of, of research and we are dealing <laughs> with all these issues because I think that it's really, really important to know your genetics, to adapt your diet and your training to, uh, to your genetics, uh, to take advantage of all of, your, um, of the genetic information that, that you have. Yeah, I guess it's difficult to say in the end how much genetics contributes to each individual person because if you are eating and training in accordance with what your genes to take advantage of the genetic capabilities you have, your sport performance is obviously going to be a lot better than if you're not. So how much your genes contributes, I guess, depends on what else you're doing as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to say the amount of the contribution of your genes, but it's a really important contribution that uh, a time before we, we don't have into account, but it's really, really important. And I think that uh, in the future, uh, the genetic information will allow us to, to manage all this information in our advantage and uh, to take advantage yeah, of, of this information to improve our diet, to improve our lifestyle, to improve our training, to obtain great benefits of all of this. One of my um, favorite genes in this area, and I think one of the most talked about as well, is ACT N3. And uh, it changes the, the, the muscle fiber, you already know this, but it changes the muscle fiber composition of your muscles. Um, and some people with, uh, with one variation of the gene, with the fast twitch variation, um, they tend to be much better at power sports, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but there are yeah some studies that show that people with this gene are, like tend to be footballers or like sprinters and stuff like that. And um, I can I'm I'm heterozygous, so I have one of the fast alleles and one of the slow alleles, uh, and I can see that in myself. You know, I'm definitely not a natural sprinter, but if I train, I can get pretty I can get pretty fast. Uh, obviously, there's some other genes at play here as well, but. I recently had a little sprinting competition against someone who has the fast version and doesn't train at all. And he was like way ahead of me. It's just like, it's a crazy natural tendency. Um, so when you have personal experiences like that, it really shows you how, what, how much of an impact these genes can have. Yeah it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's what we talked before that knowing your genes, uh, could be an advantage to know uh, your brain's position to, to this uh, sport capacities. And uh, actin-3 is a really interesting gene, as you told before. Actin-3 is, uh, is an uh, actin-binding protein that is specifically expressed in fat trees, uh, myofibers of the skeletal muscle uh, that are required for this uh, uh, explosive contraction of the muscles and also seems to be associated with these endurance capacities. Oh, so we study these polymorphins in, in, uh, into our uh, genetic score because the literature says that it's more common in endurance athletes uh, compared with sedentary individuals and also it's also it's quite that these polymorphins, uh, people with these polymorphins, that uh, have better results in the endurance test uh, because they have 
a higher proportion of um, endurance associate uh, myo fevers and uh, prefer to uh, long than short uh, distance rates. So yeah, it's a really amazing gene and it has been very, very steady. And we included this gene in, in our genetic score because it's really, really interesting. Yeah, I think it's one of the higher weighted ones, right? With the higher, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites because you can just so clearly see it. Um, but another one I really like is is Ace. Uh, so tell me more about that one and how how you included it and why you included it in your study. Yeah, we include uh, AC because the the genes encode uh, the angiotensin converting enzyme. Uh, this enzyme uh, is involved in the uh, vasoconstriction, so it regulates uh, cardiovascular dynamics and the electrolyte balance in, in body fluids. So it's essential for, for physical performance that have been very uh, associated with, uh, with different sports outcomes. So, uh, it's essential to, to, to have this gene in mind when we talk about the sport performance because it influences uh, this blood pressure, the, the, blood, uh, the fluid hemodynamics in, in our body. So um, one ACE variant, ACE is essential for uh, cardiovascular function basically and one ACE variant is associated with better sport performance. Um, it, you also found it was associated with a difference in eating habits, which I found really interesting. So what what's the connection there? Yeah, we were very surprised when we discovered this, uh, this association uh, because it's like a very peculiar correlation. Uh, we found that uh, cyclists with the AA form of this point for instance had higher uh, glycemic index uh, than the others. Uh, we observed in, in previous studies uh, the relationship between glycemic index and sport performance, uh, but that's really controversial because some authors point that uh, moderate glycemic index diets improve exercise performance, while uh, other supports that low glycemic index uh, are better. Um, a, a possible explanation for this controversy may lie that uh, unfavorable, uh, unfavorable um, GG genotypes for this gene uh, also have been linked to lower glucose tolerance. Thus, we have the hypothesis that uh, ACAA individuals might take advantage in endurance sports by consuming moderate glycemic index diets uh, because they can metabolize glucose in a better way. Uh, but we need to confirm this hypothesis with more studies in the fall. But we have this hypothesis that it is because, um, like, like the literature mentioned, uh, this type of, of genotypes have this difference in, in glucose uh, metabolisms. So they can take an advantage of these glucose metabolisms to modulate their sport performance. So interesting. And it just like, it just goes to show, I mean, I know this is only a hypothesis and this is actually something you weren't expecting to find in the study, but um, it, you know, it just, it just goes to show as I always say, and I'm sure you always say as well, that there's not one size fits all. You can't base um, the. You can't give someone general recommendations because everybody is so different. And whereas some people in this example actually can perform better with high glycemic carbohydrates, so that's more carbohydrates that are quick to raise your blood sugar. They very quickly get into your your bloodstream and raise your blood sugar. Um, and some people can really benefit from that, whereas others might not so much and might actually perform better eating more complex carbohydrates that are slower to digest and uh, raise your blood sugar more slowly. It's... Yeah, it's amazing. This is the, the, the best part of knowing your genetics, that knowing these uh, outcomes for different genotypes, you can adapt your diet to, in this example, to 
low glycemic index or high glycemic index to obtain this advantage on your sport performance. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Did you find anything else in terms of um, food consumption or nutrient consumption in a link with any of the genes you studied? Yeah, we, we also discovered like a, um, a very amazing relationship between the uh, coffee and tea uh, raisin consumes and the genetic score uh, that we observed. And we observed an inverse correlation between that, between the number of coffee and tea raisin and the genetic score. So we think that a possible explanation for this inverse correlation might be that uh, athletes uh, that are less genetically predisposed to endurance sports, um, as you know, energy is a key factor, and maybe uh, they are more likely to use these uh, ergogenic aids, such as caffeine, to help them to, to stay active. And this may, be, this may be why we observe this inverse correlation between the consumption of uh, stimulants and our performance uh, genetic uh, score. Oh my God, that's such an, another interesting finding. So people who have a lower genetic uh, sport endurance score, so they don't have as many of the genes which are um, have a favorable effect on sport, they tend to consume more caffeine because then they have more energy to be able to, or they, you know, they just have more of a boost that otherwise they may not have naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very interesting association. We, we think that this for this reason, no? that people then don't, are, don't have this, uh, we're going to say, extra energy to, to do this sport, <laughs> the, to, to practice this exercise, uh, are more likely to consume caffeine or other uh, ergonomic aids than these people that, that have uh, this extra uh, energy to, to practice the sport. Speaking of um, carbohydrate metabolism and glucose, there are also some genes that you included associated with fat metabolism and how much athletes can burn fat or how well they can burn fat for, um, for their sport performance. I think one of the genes is uh, ADRB3. What did you find there, or did you find anything interesting at all? Yeah, uh, uh, ADRB3, that is a beta-3 adrenergic, adrenergic uh, receptor, is a gene that we are very used to study in, uh, in different um, genetic tests because it's a gene uh, that is involved with the regulation of uh, lipolysis and thermogenesis uh, in the adipose tissue. And also it's related with the cardiac contraction. So it might influence the ability to obtain and to store its uh, energy. And it's essential for, for physical performance. So we include it in our score because we think that it's a, um, a really important polymorphism to have into account in, in, in this genetic score. Yeah, it's... It, there are just so many genes associated with how your body uses nutrients and how your muscles work. And it's just kind of, it, it seems so complicated, but I love how your study brings it all together into this sort of algorithm, which makes it so easy to use. Um, personally, by the way, I have a score of 53%. So it's not, you know, it's kind of, kind of mid range. Um, and I think that's about right. I mean, I have to, I have to train do, do you do you feel like this thirty three percent? I mean, the... fifty fifty three percent. Ah, fifty three. Oh, it's really nice. <laughs> Is that good? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, some of my customers are, are much higher than that, so I think it, it could be better. But you know, you've got to work with what you've got. Um, and yeah, I I think I think I feel about fifty three percent. Yeah. It has been helpful to you. I mean, uh, knowing your uh, score, your sport performance score, have helped you to understand some of your. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially with the um, actin N three gene, knowing that I have this kind of mixed composition, and that you know that that probably explains why I'm I'm not at the sprinting end of the scale, even though I try. 
Um, but also knowing that I have the ACE variant associated with the, you know, the better performance um, from high glycemic index foods, so eating more carbohydrates, um, and the uh, the gene associated with maybe perhaps less thermogenic capability. So I do see that, like when I'm eating um, a lot of good good quality carbohydrates, not like sugar because I'm too healthy for that. Um, that I, it is a lot easier for me when I'm eating more kind of high a higher proportion of fat. It is much more difficult for me. So um, yeah, it like a lot of it makes sense and it's kind of what I'd tended to do already because if you if you test a few things out anyway which athletes usually do uh, then you kind of figure out what works but it's also really nice to have this uh, scientifically backed evidence on your genes to tell you you're doing the right thing um, which is yeah yeah it's, it, it's really nice to, to hear that it, it has come to you to to know more about your your genetics and to understand no? sometimes for us it's difficult to understand and sometimes when people ask why <laughs> why this guy can run <laughs> 13 kilometers and yeah it, uh, genetics helps you to understand all these outcomes and to take the right decisions uh, around your health and your training and your diet yeah for example, I'm also never going to enter any um, short distance sprinting competitions, that's for sure. Sticking to my mid-range long distance, kind of mid-long range distance. So yeah, that fits with my genes. Um, what, um, do you, have you, I'm guessing you've done the genetic test as well. Is that true? Have you not? Have you done um, the genetic test from Precision for Health? What's your score? I want to know more about about your your experience. I was sixty percent. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, we're very close to your <laughs> very close to your results. Yeah, I feel uh, well. I I, I, um, I felt that I was lower than this because um, sometimes I'm not really good. Uh, uh, in some sports uh, performance, uh, uh, for example, um, I think that I'm good in uh, some endurance uh, sports, but uh, I'm not uh, really good like running long distance or something like that. But well, I was surprised with my 60%, not bad. <laughs> Have you changed anything in your diet since you knew your results? Well, uh, I knew my results before, some of my genetic results before doing the, the test. So I make a, a small adaptations uh, about my diet. For example, uh, with my, uh, 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 regarding the clock genes that uh, say to you uh, what time is the better uh, to consume the, some foods or uh, to know be late with your meals so I have uh, adapted uh, some of my meals uh, to the genetics to my genetics so yes more or less so I have that yeah so you've worked on the timing of your meals a lot based on so for those people who don't know by the way um, the the clock genes very aptly named are um, uh, contribute to the regulation of our circadian rhythm so um, what times it's kind of best to eat and sleep and how to um, how to base your lifestyle around around your cycle so for you it was a lot about changing the times you ate and regulating that oh, cool what impact did that have on your health well I, I feel uh, uh... I feel with more energy because sometimes mm. uh, I delay my meals a lot and I feel with low energy. Uh, so after having these uh, uh, small adjustments in my in my meals, I feel like more energy after the meals. I don't feel 
uh, sleep uh, or really, I don't know how to say mm. fatigued. Eh? Fatigued. I don't know. Fatigue, like low energy. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like a very low energy after after mm. the meal. So. Uh, so yes, I think that this is the most uh, relevant uh, um, factor that I have observed after changing my habits according to my genetics. Okay, so what are some top things you, in your opinion, you think athletes or um, people who do more sport uh, can do to improve their sport performance based on their genes? From my point of view, I think that uh, knowing your genes allow you to to tailor both your diet and your training sessions in a personalized way. Uh, knowing your genetic predisposition can make uh, that the diet, that the best suits your metabolic uh, needs to ensure that your diet is a, is a driver in your sport performance and it's not going to, um, to uh, stop your uh, your sport performance so in the same way with your training i think that knowing your genetics will allow you to to adapt uh, your training knowing that uh, the type of factors that you should pay more attention such as uh, your recovery or your uh, aerobic exercise for example uh, to get uh, the most out of your uh, of your abilities and and to anticipate to your flows or, or to other outcomes that you don't want uh, to achieve. And with your study, it's, I guess it's important to note that you guys were <clears throat> just looking at performance and there are also uh, quite a lot of genes associated with inflammation and how well you recover and stuff like that. So uh, not only can you figure out your training, your diet that's best for your performance, but also best for your recovery and uh, your yeah your muscle adaptation so there is a, a lot you can a lot you can do based on your based on your genetics what is oh go on no no i i, I was thinking that there are many genes uh, related with your recovery with your uh, fat distribution for example or with uh, your energy metabolism that um, taking into account all of them, not just one or two genes. This is the reason of our genetic score to have in count many genes that can uh, have like a, a general uh, vision of your sport performance and that knowing them can help to you to, to, to achieve uh, your objectives. Yeah, sure. So what is, um, what is next for your, your research group for Precision for Health? Is there any cool studies or cool things on the horizon? Yeah, so in our horizon, we are always uh, looking for, uh, for new genetic scores that can improve the, uh, the, 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 can improve the, the life of the persons and the healthy status. So right now we are working on a, a genetic test. Uh, I am sorry, I'm going to start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now we are working uh, uh, in a new genetic test uh, and we are doing a, a, a research about pol uh, genetic polymorphins related with your brain activity uh, with the aim of uh, uh, find those uh, that are more related with your brain performance and in order to uh, give sa to give uh, personalized advice to ah, delay cool. yeah to delay some outcomes uh, related with your stress level with uh, your uh, mm, brain uh, performance with some uh, disease related with the brain aging too that is really important yeah the, uh, there are a lot of genes in this area as well at vojo we test quite a few to do with um not only like serotonin and, and dopamine levels which are kind of your hormones that um that change or can alter your mood 
Um, but also things like, um, for example, the APOE4 allele, which predisposes you to um, a lot of uh, health issues later in life, such as Alzheimer's disease, brain health issues. Um, so yeah, there is a lot to dive into there. Maybe we can uh, join back together and talk about this when your new test is out. Oh yes, <laughs> totally sure. I, uh, I think that it's going to be a very uh, interesting genetic test uh, when we have ready. So maybe we can chat again another day about this new test when, when we have it prepared. Great. I look forward to it. Well, Christina, it was lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about all the genes related to sport performance. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure really to, to be with you and I hope to have uh, another chat with you to, to talk about another interesting thing. Great. Oh, before you go, where can people go to find out more about um, Precision for Health and the research you guys do? Yeah, so we have a website that is uh, uh, Precision for Health and you can find all the information uh, about us and also in, in the website of our research institute that is in the AFU. And there you can find all the information about us, about uh, our uh, research uh, and all the information to contact us if you want. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ali. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.